In the material handling library, there are two other blocks that work with conveyors, the conveyor enter and the conveyor exit. These two blocks allow you to move an item from a conveyor network to another type of network, like the process modeling library network that we're very used to. To make an example of this, let's use the process modeling library conveyor, and let's put it here and we will add a path. So we will kind of move the item from the material handling library conveyor to the process modeling library conveyor. So we can define this by path and the agent location will be the path here. We won't use the conveyor exit yet to see what happens. If you see the simulation, how it works, you will see that the boxes wait for the box going through the through conveyor 2 to exit before they can advance to the end of the other conveyor. And this is because since you didn't use conveyor exit, the boxes that are in this conveyor think that the box is still at the end of the conveyor. So this is a bit confusing for the model in general. So that's a good example for which you need to use the conveyor exit. Because when you use the conveyor exit, the other boxes know that the box that is here is not in the conveyor network anymore. So you just use a conveyor exit. The exiting agents, you don't want them to be removed from the space, so they stay where they are, because they will move with the new conveyor anyways. So it's kind of transferring the, the box from one network to the other. So if you run the model again, you will see that the movement is smooth, so you don't generate queues or bottlenecks in this conveyor. And this is actually what you want to achieve, except that you don't have the rotation option in this conveyor, so the boxes will rotate automatically. Instead of the conveyor, you can use, for example, uh, the move to, just a very simple move to block from the process modeling library. And let's remove the conveyor exit again. We need to define a destination as a point node. And the move to will move to the node. Of course, uh, you need to think about where is the agent when it wants to move and the agent will end up here. So will it move or not? So you see that there is an error, which is that the agent should be located in the same network as the destination node. Yes, because the box is not in the network. So you could eventually, if you want to test, you could put another move to and jump to a new point node, which is in the beginning. So this will make the agent be in the network, but we will have the same problem that we had with the conveyor. But first let's change the speed here. And let's make a trip time of uh, four seconds in order to generate this bottleneck. And you see that the same thing is happening. So there's no difference. Again, here, instead of jumping, we need to remove the item from the conveyor network. So a conveyor exit again, and the model will run smoothly. The conveyor enter works in a very similar way, but the transition to the conveyor occurs in the convey block anyways, meaning that the convey block works as a convey enter if you choose a source that is either a conveyor or a position on conveyor. When you use current position, nevertheless, the situation is different because if you use current position, the convey block expects the item that is coming to the conveyor to already be in the conveyor network. 
So since we haven't defined a initial position here, we can, for example, define with a point node in, as the place where the items are generated. So location of arrival, we can define the point node. Now, if we run the model, we will have an error. And of course, the agent is not in the conveyor. So it appears here, it looks like it is in the conveyor, but it's actually not because it's not in the conveyor network. So to avoid this problem, you just add a conveyor enter and you define where you want your item to be. So here you need to define either a conveyor or a position on conveyor. So we can use this and we can use the same agent uh, width and generate the orientation to the left as it was before. So if we run it, we will have an error again. Why? Because the conveyor enter is in the wrong place. You should be very careful on which, in the order in which you put your elements or blocks. So let's put the queue before the conveyor enter and let's run it again. Of course, the, um, this works well, but you can see that since the initial position was here, you see that it's, it looks messy. But we can just solve this by just creating a path and making this a little bit different with an initial point node here. The item is generated on this node and afterwards we can make a delay here and define the agent location as this. At least it will look nicer, but it won't have the rotation, but maybe it doesn't matter. But since the capacity is one, let's add uh, an additional queue here with maximum capacity and maybe the source will not be generated and maybe the source will not generate uh, anything in any node and also let's remove this queue because we will use the other one and we already have one possible element in in the delay so on enter we can change the rotation With this function, set rotation with this in radians, so p divided by 2. And when it exits, you can define again the rotation as 0. And also we can move this a little bit further in order for the box not to be exactly in the conveyor position. And if we run it again, you can see that the boxes are immediately placed, placed in the conveyor. And this is much nicer, right? So that's it and see you in the next video.